Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. Stampin' Sue Creates here. <coughs> Whenever I go to talk, I always have to do that cough thing. I don't get it. Um, anyhow, um, if you're new here, thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it and I'm not sure. Again, where do I look? Do I look there, there? I don't know. Meant to put on some lipstick and totally forgot. So I am what I am. Remember seeing that on a shirt years ago. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're doing another machine embroidery. This was a special request. I forget who it was that requested it, but someone in one of the comments said about, um, where did I put it? Oh, hold on. About this cute little bunny. So yesterday I did a video on hoop size and I showed this bunny, but I believe I showed it in another video too. So this is a free design, I'll put it this way so you can see it all, um, from Creative Kiwi. And it's creative with a K and Kiwi, of course, K-I-W-I, -I, two separate words. So if you like machine embroidery and you like free, which free is for me and I'm sure for you too, um, check this out. They're not sponsoring this video. Just, um, I'm just doing this just because you asked. So, and because it was free, then um, it's a free download, free design, and I love free. So, if you're not yet a subscriber, and you want me to continue to create more and more videos, especially special requests ones where I have to purchase designs and purchase certain materials to make the designs to share with you, I would really appreciate if you would hit the red subscribe box. Next to that, ring the notification bell. You'll receive notifications when I upload new videos. And um, by you watching, um, commenting, thumbs up, sharing, and subscribing, you help my channel immensely. So I don't get paid for any of these. It's just something that I offer free just to help you because I started machine embroidery over a year ago and I had no instruction whatsoever. I am not a professional embroiderer. I'm just like you, do home embroidering, and I love it so much and I love to share what I love with you. So all that being said, let's check out um, and let's stitch up this fun bunny for Easter. You can make it any color you want. I used... Um, a white fleece for it. You can use any kind of fleece of your choice. Here's the back. Back is just plain and it's all done in the hoop and they offer different sizes. I am going to be doing the, what size is my hoop? 8 by 12? 8 by 12 I think is my largest hoop. Yeah, I think that's the hoop I did. Um, let me see. Yes, it should fit in there. Okay, so uh, let's go about doing this, right? Now, you know, I don't edit my videos, so if you don't like to watch the chit-chat, you can just fast-forward through it on your own accord. But if you like the chit-chat, and I hear a lot of you leave comments that you do, then go ahead and let's stitch it out together, okay? All right, let me flip you around here. Whoop. Close your eyes if you get a little dizzy with that. Um, let me figure out my tripod here. All right, I think you can see that, yes. Okay, so I am working on a Brother Innovus Essence VE2300. Love this machine. This is my third embroidered machine. So we're gonna hit, I already have it saved over here on a USB um, hit embroidery. And I have it on my USB. And there it is right there. Now. Here's one thing you'll notice. The pattern combination is too large for the extra large embroidery frame. If you plan to add, if you plan to add more patterns, rotate the pattern combination. So it's telling you that your hoop isn't long enough to do it, wide enough to do it that way. So we're just going to hit the 90 degrees and boop, there it is. So this, um, we're going to hit embroidery. All right, so this is 20 minutes, so that's not bad. And you'll see here the different hoop sizes. It takes my largest hoop, so I believe that's what the one is that I have. Um, so here's my hoop. Not really much to see there. And um, let me flip you over here. 
Okay, so my largest hoop, I have a cutaway stabilizer in here. I'm gonna use that. The last one when I did, um, I'll show you what that beep beep was. The last one I did, I used a uh, tear away and it was just a lot difficult because it leaves that crinkle sound. So let's go back to the screen. What was the beep beep? So it says the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands, etc., away from the carriage. Okay. All right. So that's all it did. It just moved to the center of the frame. All right. So uh, first off, uh, I have to put my frame in here, and it did that again. So let me just. Okay, it's set. So I just have white embroidery thread. I am using um, Thread Nanny thread and. Um, like I said, a, a cutaway stabilizer. Now this has 10,571 stitches. I read somewhere that every 10,000 stitches, you should double up on your um, stabilizer. However, I'm not. So, because it's 10,571 stitches. So, um, I'm gonna put the foot down. And um, this is going to do, I believe, an outline stitch. So the machine was giving me a little bit of trouble. Um, I may, may need to move my hoop a little bit. That's what I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna move my machine for because. Um, well, let me clean out the back. I should have done this before. Because what's going to happen is this hoop is like really large. So you want to make sure you have an, a lot of room around it so that it can move. Okay. All right. There we go. Here we go. So anyhow, um, it's going to do an outline. Now you can, if you want, I suppose you can use some batting. Um, I'm not going to because I'm using fleece. But, uh, see how that goes, right? So it's doing the outline of the bunny. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the whole thing because the hoop is so large. <laughs> All right, so it's going to do the outline of the design. In my last um, video I did, I asked you what you thought of having the video camera over on the right, and um, I got a lot of positive results with that, so um, I'm going to do the setup the same as before. All right, so I have my fleece, and um, I'm going to pull this out a little bit. So I wasn't sure. Let me just throw this over the top, and let me see if this is going to cover Ooh, this is gonna be a little tight. All right. Have another piece here. And there is a right and a wrong side to the fleece. Um, I'm gonna use this one, this piece here. This is going to be for the top. Let me just take a peek. I'm gonna cut that a little close there. All right, but we should be okay. Okay, so I have my fleece in here. And now this is going to do um, the outline stitch. So this will stitch the fleece to the stabilizer. This will just take a minute. Blue. 
Now this um, embroidery design does come in different sizes. So check out Creative Kiwi and um, see what size you would like to do yours. All right, now um, I'm going to use a piece of wash away stabilizer and um, I am going to place this over the top. Not sure how far up I have to go, but let me put this at an angle maybe. I'm trying to do so I can get the paws and the ears in, but you know, probably shouldn't chance it. And they're probably, oh, let me reach around you. Sorry if I moved you at all. They also have it on a roll that I purchased, and you know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'm not going to use those smaller cut squares. I'm going to go ahead and cut one of these from the roll. You know, there's no stitching down here at the feet, but I want to make sure that I do it all in one. See, it's a little overkill on that, but this way it's down, it's, you know, safe. It's going to cover the paws here and the ears and, of course, the face and the belly. All right, so now it's telling me I need to change my thread. And uh, I'm just going to use these scissors. So I'm going to cut it up at the top, pull it down from the bottom, and um, check my threads that I've been using over here on my left. So my dog may be barking in a little bit. And I'm just going to apologize for that ahead of time. I did close my door. Um, there we are. I did close my door. So um, if you do hear her barking, hopefully it'll lessen. All right, so I'm using a pink for the ears, and this is Thread Nanny's thread. Um, thread Nanny 085. Okay, so it's a nice bright pink. Why not, right? You could do it whatever color you like when you create yours. I am planning some more upcoming videos. Um, like I said, um, all right, let's get this going. This is going to do the ears. Um, and this is four minute stitch. I'm just looking. Okay, yes. All right. I do have some planned upcoming videos. Um, special requests. Now you can tape this down if you want. If you're going to tape it down, I would definitely say tape it to your hoop. Um, but it's just a wash away, tear away stabilizer. It's wash away, but you know, you can tear it. Um, so I'm planning some upcoming videos. I, I do get special requests and um, depending, you know, the time that I have, because I do have a full-time job, and um, I have my Stampin' Up! business as well. So depending on how much time I have in finances, which is another thing because uh, now this is a free design. So, you know, free is good, right? But if I have to purchase a design, sometimes I just, you know, I can't afford to purchase all the designs. But, you know, again, once you purchase it, you know, you have it forever. So, um, yeah, I did... Pause this for a moment as I see this thread here. I'm going to pull this through and trim this. Get that out of the way. All right. So, yeah, depending on time and finances and that whole bit, um, that's what kind of determines me if I, you know, what videos I'm going to do. So. If you do have any special requests, feel free to put them down below. If there's any questions on anything about embroidery that um, I can answer, I'd be more than happy to answer. If I cannot uh, answer them, then I will try to find out the answers for you. Okay, so this is a nice little stitch to fill in the ears. And then it does a little stitch all the way around. Once you get something stitched on this, um, plastic. It looks like plastic. It's not freezer paper or what is that stuff called? Plastic wrap. It's made from machine embroidery. So, I mean, I've had people say, well, I just use like plastic wrap. No, it's not plastic wrap. It's 
It's a fibrous um, material that when it's wet, it will wash away. But majority of the time, when you're doing things like this, you'll be able to just tear this away. And if it has a little poof in it like that, don't worry about that. Um, it's just being a stabilizer on top. So you may ask, well, why are you using that? The reason I'm using this is that because of this fleece, and depending on how thick your fleece may be, you don't want your stitches to get sunk down in, like if you were going to embroider a towel or anything that's a little bit thicker with a nap on it. You want to um, have something for your stitches to lay on, you know. So that is the reason why I'm using this wash away stabilizer on top as well. So it stabilizes underneath the fabric and the top, it stabilizes the stitches on top. So I hope that makes sense. It's pretty simple when you think about it. But, um, so when I'm using the colors off to the left-hand side, or depending on the hoop size, sometimes down here in the front, I'll line up my threads that I'm using. But right now I have it off to the left because I'm gonna need this pink color again when I do the little, um, the nose and the little face part, you know. But again, they're suggested colors. If you like to, you know, change up the colors and, you know, personalize it, you can always use um, an editing software. I like in Brilliance. And I could have very easily, before I put this on my hoop, instead of having the little heart in the center, I could have went in and added a name or, you know, a year, or whatever it is you want to add. You can personalize these. Okay, so now this is telling me um, blue is next. Let me pull this out. All right, so let's take a look at our bunny, our sample one. So blue was done underneath, okay? Now again, you can change that up. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit of a lighter blue. So again, um, Thread Nanny uh, 017 and Thread Nanny was um, nice enough to reach out to me and ask me if they sent me some product oops if I would review it so um, go back and watch that video so that will show you actually there's two videos I have for Thread Nanny one is the unboxing, and we're going to go ahead and do the eye, and this will, eyes, this will be two minutes. So, oh wait, hold on. You're saying, uh, Susan, or Sue, whatever you, however you want to call me, and I'm going to go back, hold on. I didn't thread it. Okay. I didn't hit the thread button. Now I'm going to pick up my foot. So let's go back. See, that's what happens sometimes. I get distracted. <laughs> um, let me make sure this is here out of the way. They reached out to me and asked me if they would send me some product if I would review it. And so, well, certainly. So, um, I think that's going to be okay. So they sent me um, a huge box of thread, embroidery thread. And um, they were kind enough to reach out a second time. And I did the unboxing and I did a review as well. They reached out a second time because they saw I was um, fumbling with um, a stabilizer. And they said they, they noticed that and they said, would it be okay if they sent me some stabilizer? So they did, they sent me a stabilizer, um, a tearaway stabilizer and they, you know, they ask me you know, what size or what kind do I like to use. You know, they're very nice, very nice people. So check them out online, threadnanny.com. And they have lots of embroidery items that you will need to complete your project. And the only thing I don't like about this Creative Kiwi, and I'm hoping because I picked the lighter blue, is if you notice that stitch it went from eye to eye. And when I did the darker blue, when, and it came to doing the nose, which was pink, um, you could kind of see the darker stitching. So I'm hoping I picked a lighter blue and you won't see that. 
All right, so anyhow, um, my machine was purchased through Pocono Sew and Back in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. They also have an online store. I will put the, the websites down below in the comments. I hope to remember, right? <laughs> and um, I dealt with Fred, and this is the second machine. The first machine I purchased from just online, Joann's, because it was only a 4x4 four four, and um, those machines are a dime a dozen. Well, they were before the whole outbreak. But um, then when I wanted to upgrade, so I'm gonna tr take this out. The next color we're gonna do is black. So when I wanted to um, do a trading, because of course, I wouldn't recommend, as you've noticed through many of my videos, I wouldn't recommend a four by four hoop not that there's anything wrong with them. It's just you grow out of it very quickly. Um, unless your budget doesn't allow anything then 4x4, four four, then by all means, um, do it. You know, taste it. Dip your feet in the water. See if embroidery is something, you know, that you like to do before you go and invest into um, a machine that costs a lot more money. Yeah, I was just going to look at that, that piece of thread. I was going to cut it, but it eh, sucked it down in there, so that's good. Um, so Fred at Pocono Sewing Back was wonderful to work with. Um, he was so wonderful that uh, I had an issue with my 1600. And again, I have videos all on all of these things. Next time I think when I go to Pocono Sewing Back, I might do a walkthrough and post that. But it's dangerous when you go to an embroidery machine. Um, embroidery sewing. They're a fabric store too. Check out their online store. Because what happened when I took in my 1600, because it had um, froze up, I did the mistake of looking around. And hence, this is what came home with me, this essence. And I traded in the 1600 and I upgraded to this uh, Essence VE 2300. So you may ask, well, why upgrade? Well, um, I didn't have to. Fred didn't pressure me into it. I just made the mistake, if you want to call it a mistake, maybe it wasn't, to shop around. Well, what do you have? And so, you know, they always have trade-ins. So if you can't afford a brand new machine, I would definitely trust purchasing a trade-in from um, Pocono Sewing Back because they go over the machines, they service machines, they're, um, they stand up to um, policies as far as purchasing from them. You can purchase supplies from them at a discount once you purchase from them. And um, you know that if you're going to buy a second-hand machine off, say, Marketplace or something, you don't, you don't know the history of that machine. You know, you may have to take it in for uh, servicing. This way, if you buy direct, you know, a second-hand kind of know what you're getting. So he did show me the, that he did have a trade-in of another model, which was really nice, and I considered it, but um, for the same price, I could have gotten brand new this. Now, the other machine was a, um, forget the exact brand of it. Okay, we're going to trim the black, and we're going to go back to pink, the same pink we used before. But it was a, um, what is that on there? Hold on a sec was a uh, baby lock and it was an older machine but it was very well taken care of and he knew all the history on it and um, it was an embroidery and sewing machine and it had a lot of um, add-ons to it probably was a great machine but I just thought you know if I'm gonna invest money into a machine um, I want the new with all the new fun gadgets and gizmos. So hence, this machine followed me home. And uh, when we were loading it up into my SUV, um, this one came in two boxes because the machine was in one and the add-on embroidery arm was in another. And Fred joked at me and he says, well, next time you come, if you upgrade, you may need to bring a bigger vehicle. And <laughs> it just... I just chuckled and I thought, boy, he knows me, right? Next time. He knows there'll be a next time. Now, he did try to um, persuade me to 
by a more commercialized machine. And it was a single needle. I mean, they had multi-needles as well. It was a single needle. And um, it was made for more heavy-duty stitching. Which, you know, when I first bought the other machine, I did a lot of stitching. It was during the pandemic and my work hours were cut. I had a lot more spare time. But um, I don't have as much time now because, you know, I've been back to work full time again. And um, I'm probably not, well, I'm putting a lot of stitches on this machine too. But it'll probably have to go in service soon. So you want to keep that in mind about every two and a half million stitches you probably would want to take it in for a service they um, you know go through all the nitty gritties and clean everything out for you and um, put you back in business again um, but anyhow that's my story on that so it's kind of like when you um, when you're thinking of getting a puppy or you want to get a puppy but you're not really sure don't go and look at them because you know what happens. You see that and you're like, yeah, you walk out, you purchase the new puppy. <laughs> Who can relate to that? Raise your hand. Me. Um, although my puppy days are over. Uh, my um, last dog uh, and well, my cat too um, were both rescues from um, local. Uh, one was a uh, blue chip out in the back mountain area where I got my dog, and my cat was from True Friends up in Montrose, Pennsylvania. So I'm in the northeastern Pennsylvania area. And definitely, if you can adopt, adopt. And here we go, going off on a tangent, right? So anyhow, what else is happening in my life? Well, personally, in my personal life, um, work has been good. My full-time job has, has been going well. Um, my daughter, as many of you know, if you follow me, and um, I did some napkins to embroider for her upcoming wedding in June. However, there's been some changes in the plan of that due to the ongoing um, pandemic. So um, she made a decision about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, that being she's very limited as to how many people she can have at her wedding and even though the governor has raised it up to I believe we're 20 percent um, that would only allow her to have 18 people at her wedding and it's supposed to be in June so um, she decided that she's gonna we're gonna move the wedding venue to Las Vegas so hey why not right so that is the plan, it's just going to be very small now. When she spoke to the uh, wedding planners in Vegas because of stipulations as well there, she can have 12 people, but it's just going to be uh, immediate family that's going to be attending if they're able to attend. So that's exciting. And at first I thought, well, I've been to Vegas before, but then I'm like, you know what? How many times does your daughter get married? Hopefully only once. She tells me only once. Okay, next up we're going to do the um, hearts. So this is where I have to make another decision. Do I want to do, say, like a light blue, um, like I did for the eyes? I'm thinking that might be nice. Let's do that. Let's do this light blue color. Oh, and the, pardon me, Thread Dandy again, 017. The same color I used for the eyes. This is going to do the heart that's um, in the chest and the two paws. So, yeah, we are going to Vegas. So, um, I have more of a story about that as well. Because, you know, it just seems like, you know, you have things just to happen in your life. And it's just like things that you just can't make up, right? Okay. So, let's talk about um, real IDs. All right, so we all know real IDs, the whole thing came out about you need to have a real ID um, because your license, your driver's license just isn't going to work for you anymore as a show ID. I, I don't get it. I think it's a moneymaker. I don't get it. All right, 
So because of everything going on, they um, moved the date of getting them done. And I believe it's everywhere. It's not just Pennsylvania. It's everywhere. But Pennsylvania is always late to the party. So um, they moved the date to require real ID to October of 2021. But if you... That squeak noise again. But if you have a passport, I suppose you can use a passport. So real ID is for um, boarding a flight, governmental buildings. Um, I don't know wherever wherever you need to show ID. Yada yada. Well, of course you know I haven't done the real ID yet. So I thought I had a day off from work last week. Went online, found all the necessary papers that are required for it. Okay, so I am divorced, so I need um, my birth certificate with this original seal, raised seal. You need a driver's license, some other form of ID, like a bill, social security card. Um, what else did you need? Um, it said, if you're divorced, a divorce decree. All right, so I went through my strong box, and I have a passport, but it expired during July of the pandemic so I didn't renew it so I even took that all right so I get there and um, sit down with a very nice woman and she said you have all the needed requirements oh boy well, heck yeah I'm prepared I got it all went through the checklist so problem number one of course I was married and I changed my name well, you need to have your marriage license. Well, heck, I got divorced back in 2009. Do you think I have that? I don't have that. He may have that. I don't have that. Okay, well, you can go to the courthouse annex and you can get a copy of it from them. That'll be $25 for that. Okay. Just, oh, we have another problem. I'm like, really? Well, uh, so before we do the next problem, so I said, but I have my divorce decree, which is, you know, with the gold seal on it, the whole kit with the boodle. She goes, no, we need, we need a piece of paper that says why your name that you were born with was changed to your name that you currently have. Divorce decree? No, that doesn't work. I said, well, then you need to update your webpage because it doesn't say nothing about marriage license. So, okay, fine. I can, all right, I'll do that. Um, and she says, well, we have another problem. Um, I did change my social security card back when I got married. And you know, when you're filling in the blanks, it probably said middle initial and I just put M because that's my middle initial. However, that's my middle name that was chosen by me when I was confirmed. Because back when I was born, you had a first name and a last name. You didn't have a middle name. Like my kids, they have middle names. They were born with middle names. She goes, well, that's a problem because your birth certificate says this name and your social security card has an M for your middle initial. So you need to get a new social security card. I'm thinking like, are you kidding me? All right, well, how do I do that? Well, you can go online, yada, 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 do fill this out. I'm sure there's a fee. Nothing in life is free, right? So real ID, I believe is $30. The marriage license, I believe, well, no, not I believe. She told me it's 25. We're already up to $55. And then whatever the a security card, whatever that fee is going to be. Probably another $25. Who knows? So she happened to say, oh, I see you have a passport. Well, that, that'll be, that'll be, that'll be your way. I said, I do, but it expired. Well, she said, that's probably your best way out is even though it expired, I think she said you have up to five years that you can reapply and get a, you know, another updated one because you know, they're only good for 10 years well okay so I left with all the information she gave me the information so then I thought all right this will be this will be easy right it's gonna be easy I'm just you know I'm gonna call the post office and see about 
you know, getting that. Well, you call there, you get a answering machine and prompts, and the mailbox is full. All right, well, I'll try to get a hold of the courthouse, which is where I originally got mine from. Oh, I like the blue. What do you guys think? You like the blue? Okay, well, we are almost done. Next thing, all we have to do is to put our layer on top of our fabric. And um, it's going to stitch together. But let me show you how easy this is. Just to peel this away. And if any remains, all you have to do is take... Um, I like to use a water brush. You can use a Q-tip with water. I'm not going to be too worried about getting into all the details. Because I can do that once I'm all done. I just want to remove all this because I'm going to stitch the... Um, other piece to it. There we go. Well, that is so cute. How cute would this be, like, for a baby? You know? <coughs> oh, pardon me. All right. So, I have my other piece here, and I'm just making sure the nap... Okay, it goes like that. Look how cute this is. Oh, my gosh. I love the blue. All right. So, let me line this up. And I know it's way too long, so I'm going to trim the excess. I mean, I could just leave it there, but I'm just going to trim this. And leave the other piece will be for another project. Okay, flat this out. Make sure it's going to cover everywhere. Okay, there we go. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the white thread. Again, Thread Danny is the thread I'm using. And of course, I don't know if I told you, but it's 001. So anyhow, um, to make a long story short, it took me forever to get somebody. Well, show, uh, turned out Courthouse doesn't do it anymore. Went down to the post office. Very nice young man there. Helped me out. And, um, $110. What am I doing? I'm hitting the wrong thing. $110 and, um, sent in my old passport to get my new passport. And it's up to the postal service right now to, um, mail it to where it had to go and get it to me. So that was my story. I'm gonna stop this because I'm flatten that out. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. So you um, technically can get into a federal building, get on a plane, do all the same things you can with a passport as you can do for a real ID. Cost me $110, but um, it would have cost me probably $75 just to do the real ID. And passport, passport? Heck, if I'm going to go anywhere where I need one, I'll have it for 10 years. So that's, that's my story. It's a long story, too, but heck, it filled up 20 minutes of stitching, right? So, yes. Okay, so back to embroidery. So this is doing the final outline stitch. It goes around twice. What's going to happen with that is um, once it's done, my project is complete, all done in the hoop, which is super easy to do. And all I have to do is to um, take it out of the hoop, trim around it, turn it right side out, and stuff it, and then close up the opening. And then you'll be done with your bunny. I mean, so if you need to make these for kids, grandkids, neighbors, I don't know, whoever you want to make a bunny for, whether it be for Easter or a baby um, gift, quick and simple. Finish sewing. Okay, thank you. So let's take this out. So when you take this out, that same 
thing's going to come up. The carriage is going to move. So you just hit OK and it just moves. All right. So I'm going to take this out of the hoop. And that is a big hoop. All right. So here it is. All right. So let's see. Um, I probably should take you over to my other desk. And we're going to trim this out. Put some lights on over here. Don't mind the mess. I was preparing yesterday. I think you can still hear me. I was preparing yesterday for my upcoming... Um... All right, close your eyes because I'm going to move you. And don't look at any of the mess. Don't judge. Do not judge. <laughs> preparing for my... Um... This is my stamping desk. There we go. I think you could see for my upcoming Facebook Live this week, which, um, I forgot my scissors, which is going to be devoted to Easter. So, okay, so here we're going to go. Now, the other thing I, I do want to suggest is um, if you do other crafts, have a pair of scissors devoted strictly for fabric. Well, you'll notice I use this for cutting my thread as well. Fabric and thread Hence, I have this cute little um, charm on here from one of my Creative Notions subscription boxes. So that I know that this is for fabric only. With the little sewing machine. Isn't that super cute? Can you see that? Isn't that cute? You can make these. All right, so here's my outline. I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back here and trim some of these long threads. All right, so everybody always wants to see the back, right? There's the back. Looks pretty good, huh? That's how you know if you're having any issues with your machine, is by checking the back with the bobbin. It should be um, one-third of your um, bobbin thread and your other color coming through. A nice um, overall look to that. All right, so I'm going to start here where the opening is. And um, I'm going to leave myself a long tail. I'll trim that later. I think you could see that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out around. It helps if you have good lighting. Because it's hard to see white on white. But yeah, I didn't want my stitching to show through. So I used the white thread. But you can make, oh my goodness, that was a low flying plane. You can make your bunny any color you like. Um, I've only used the fleece, so I've only, this is only my second bunny. But I would imagine, you know, you can use other fabrics. If you shop at Dollar Tree, they have those chamois, you know, for cleaning your car. And I've made those before. I've used those before making um, projects. Might be easier to cut it on the other side. Hold on. Because, you know, I'm getting caught up on my stabilizer. All right. I'm going to trim this off here. Let's see. This will be easier. Yeah, probably not. Probably about the same. So the, the chamois from the Dollar Tree that they have in the car section, those actually are like furry, kind of, sort of. And um, they make a real cute um, animal, whether it be, you know, a bunny or whatever it is you're making. They're also great um, to, uh, what was I going to say? You know, two things at one time here. Sue has a problem with that. Um, they're great if you're doing like applique with little bunnies. I mean, I've used them on my table runner. If I don't have fabric. And did you know that you can purchase things in the Dollar Tree online? However, you need to order a lot of them. Because I looked into the chamois because I had a hard time trying to find them. All right, let's look at the other side. 
I had a hard time trying to find them. I was a little close to my stitching there. I'm hoping that that's not going to cause a problem where you get what they call a blowout. See, I was a little close there. My eyes aren't what they used to be. Okay, so next step, now you can go ahead, you know, I'm not going to trim any of this because this is nice, soft. It's giving me a little stability. I'm going to go ahead and turn it inside out. So if you purchase, um, let me grab my bone folder, through the Dollar Tree, um, you have to buy large quantities. So the chamois are available online. You, ha you do have to get 24 of them. And um, if you pick it up at your local Dollar Tree, they don't charge you shipping. But you can have it shipped to your house. So this takes this is a little tedious. It's not that it's difficult. It's just what they call tedious till you start getting some of it pulled out. Perhaps I started too large. All right, let's try this again. All right, let's go with the little feet. Because I always get like so anxious like when I'm doing this because I can't wait to see it done. And then you just fill it with your um, favorite polyfill. And I buy my polyfill through Amazon. You should buy that huge big box of it because then I have it and I'm done and you know, it's not like it's going to go bad or anything. And I just use that for any of my projects. Here we go. Here we go. I'm seeing a face now. Seeing a face is a good thing, right? All right, here comes the face. And again, that, that plastic is going to be on there. So we'll work on that. And see, you could still see that stitching on the nose. See that? And that's from the black with the eyes. So it's the only thing I don't like about this. All right, so I'm going to use my bone folder. Now you can use, you know, whatever it is you like to use when you're turning your projects. But I don't like to use scissors because I have poked right through the fabric with scissors before. And the bone folder has, um, of course, it's by Stampin' Up! So if you need to order a bone folder, feel free to go on to my online store at Stampin' Sue Creates. Dot stampin up dot net. Throw that little plug in there. Okay, so now we have the ears. But bone folders are sold through my online store. And while you're there, check out whatever what else is there. Why not? I have a lot of people that actually um, respond to my in the respond in the comments that um, they do stamping as well. They make cards and scrapbooking and you know paper projects. So that they do. You know a little bit of that i'm sure as crafters there are many of us now the ears are like pain in, in the pain in the bone folder so to speak but let's try doing it this way but um what was i saying but yeah um most of us that do crafts we do multiple types of crafts now what you can do before you turn it is you can go around all these um, edges and do little snips so that when it turns, you know, when you turn it right side out, you won't have any of that gathering. But I found once I fill it with the polyfill, I'm usually okay. No, this is really not that difficult, I think, because I'm talking and not focusing on what I'm doing because I do have a problem with that. Focusing. Once I get that stitching part out, the rest should just come. There we go, see? That's not that hard. And just kinda smoosh it back and forth. There's an ear. Well, let's get this other one pulled out. So I can imagine when, um, I mean, this is a larger, a larger stitching. I can imagine the smaller ones might be a little more tedious with the turning. All right. Make sure we get his full face done. Ears. Arms. And when you go to stuff it, you know, you can make sure you get everything turned out the right way. 
so there. Let me draw that aside. So there is our little flat bunny. <laughs> he's flat now, but he soon will be poofed up. And then, you know, you can peel all this, like I stated before, this plastic. Or um, you can use something like this. You put water in here, and um, then you could go around, make sure this doesn't have alcohol. You can just go around and um, squeeze out some water in all these small areas and the water soluble stabilizer just kind of magically dis disappears if you can't get into like say where the whiskers are let me squeeze a little water down you know and that will it's like kind of like sticky it feels like when it starts like melting away it kind of see how it's sticky but use a little bit more water and you won't have no problem so there you have it there is the Creative Kiwi free 3D bunny. So if you want to make one of your own, head on over to www.creativekiwi.com and check out a lot of the other designs that they have on there. They have a lot of free designs and they have a lot of designs that are very inexpensive and just lots, lots of fun things you can make. I'm just looking here, a little piece. It's kind of like addicting when you start peeling that soluble stabilizer. All right. So there we go. There is our fun little bunny. So I forget who it was, but whoever you were that, whoever it was that asked if I could do a stitch out for the bunny, that's how quick and simple it is. So um, thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you being here and um, go stitch something fun. All right, everyone. Bye for now. Have a great day.